entrepreneurs of the world, come join us at cooperativeglobal.com and become a member of the first crowdfund specifically designed to stop the common causes of poverty hurting black families around the world today. After all, their health and well-being is our responsibility. Make sure you pick up my two books that's in Amazon right now. The first one is Pass Aggressive Racism in the System of White Supremacy. And I talk about in that particular book how the system of white supremacy really runs and on our daily lives here in America. In our latest book, Seven Steps to Decolonize the Mind, we go through those steps to try to deprogram you uh, from the system of white supremacy. Make sure you can pick up those books on Amazon.com. Hey family, make sure you join us on the new and improved AfricanDiasporaNews.org. Now it is our uncensored and raw truth website. We have to make sure to have our own website because on social media platforms, they do have rules and at any time they could change a rule and shut a whole genre down. Now that would not happen to us because on AfricanDiasporaNews.org, we can speak the truth. We don't have to hold back. So make sure you join our website today. Cesso Global and African Diaspora News Channel presents the Ghana Luxury Property Tour. It will be a eight day tour coming to you starting October 1 through October 8, 2023. Now you enjoy a five star stay at a hotel, the finest properties in Ghana. You connect with industry professionals. You will also visit cultural landmarks, have a meet and greet with the team and so much more. Make sure that you go to the description box below and hit that link to sign up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are here this Sunday. I hope everything is going good for you. Um, this is what the last Sunday in February. Uh, you know, this is a short month. Uh, we about to hit into March. Uh, you know, spring break is coming up, you know, for some people. I know the kids are definitely uh, excited about spring break coming, get at least a week off uh, for school. So, you know, thank you for joining us today. And, you know, we won't take too long now. Um, there are people here, I'm not, okay, I hear myself pretty good here. There are people, like I say, if you would like to join the conversation in the chat room, uh, the live chat, you must become a member. Uh, we have established in 2023 now as um, that time for live streams that you have, must be a member to come in. That's memberships is a way to support the channel. Um, it's nothing you don't have to do. Uh, per se, but if you want to say I want to be a part of the live conversation and we cut down on the trolling, right? Um, that's another way we cut down on the trolling because uh, if trolls want to, you know, become a member of the troll, I mean, that would be a kind of a waste of money because you'll get kicked out. But anyway, so thank you for joining us today. Now I have, um, as you see on the title, I say them folks are tired of keeping silent on how they feel about black Americans. And I'm going to get to that, I'm going to get to that subject matter, but so, you know, sometimes emergency topics come up and you're like, you know what? I got to address that emergency topic. Um, but before I get to the emergency topic, you know, we just come back from New York. Um, I was in New York. Uh, shout out to the brothers and sisters in New York. Some of you I've met, you know, over there uh, while I was in New York. It's a little cold, um, but I'm back here in Houston, 80 degree weather. We, we are good here. Um, I went to the Afro Future Summit. Um, while I was out there, I met um, a few people, you know, definitely, and I also met the brother with the Diaspora Affairs Office um, that's uh, from Ghana. I met that brother, and uh, he was real nice and accommodating. Uh, when I met them, Aretha, thank you for joining us. And, uh, you know, I do have that brother's picture, you know, just to see if I can put it up real quick, just to show y'all who the brother is. That's the brother right here. So if you can see at least on that side right there, that, that's me and the brother from the uh, Diaspora Affairs Office. You know, real nice brother uh, from Ghana. He said, hey, man, you know, anything y'all need, you know, you call me. You know, brother gave us his, his contact information, his number and all of that. So, you know, shout out to our, our brother there. So let's get this up off the screen. But the emergency topic, let's get to that. So I've been, you know, knowing that Nigeria, has um, going through their elections right now. And I've been noticing the Western media 
has been really paying attention to the Nigerian elections. And I say, hmm, in the back of my mind, I say, what they got going on up their sleeve? What are they, what's so important to them about this particular election? We know Nigeria is one of the most populous African countries, you know, in the whole continent with about 400 million people. Nigeria has a big supply of um, oil and other, you know, natural resources that the Western world do not have at all. Okay. It's amazing how the countries that have all the resources is of those superpowers. That's, that's interesting. The countries that have nothing, they're the superpowers. That's very, very interesting. But they're all paying attention to this one election in Nigeria. And when I seen a video off of Al Jazeera that was just shared to me on Twitter, I said, okay, now something's up for me for sure. And the only thing I would say to Nigerians who could be listening or possibly listen or any Nigerian here that got family members over there in Nigeria, that says a lot of young people have been voting and voting in record numbers to make some change in Nigeria. And rightfully so, you know, you had the NSARS protests and all of that, right? And, and the police, you know, that's just doing some horrible things to the people, right? They want some change at the government level. And the young people should get involved in, in their politics because if the young people want to see change on the African continent, they're going to have to get involved. Um, there's not that many old people there. It is one of the youngest continents on the planet Earth. But when I saw this video, and then let me let me let me put it up on the screen. Then put it up on the screen. <clears throat> Just give me a second. I said, "Oh, we got a problem in Nigeria." Hold on, let me clear this up off of my screen here. Right here. Despite a slow start uh, with the Bivas. Before I get started, that's your girl, Stacey Abrams. She's in Nigeria. And, and, and what she's doing in Nigeria, let, let, let's, let's play it a little bit. You'll see what she's actually doing. We have seen orderly lines. We have seen long lines signaling strong enthusiasm. She is an international observer. Stacey Abrams that say she can't do nothing for black folk in America, but she's in Nigeria being an international observer. We know Stacey Abrams is one of the biggest Democrat shields in America. She is white supremacy in blackface, at least the left wing of white supremacy in blackface, right? But she's over there. Got her hair braided and everything. I never seen uh, uh, Stacey's hair braided at one time. But she in Nigeria, she's observing. Let's, let's play this. But we've also seen a great deal of cooperation and a very peaceful conversation among voters. They want to be heard and they are willing to stand in line and have patience because they know that's their path to progress. It's interesting you say that because one of the things that I have observed the past few days, this huge contingent of youth voters that many believe will really play a significant role in this election and the people. Who sent her, ladies and gentlemen? Who sent her? I've never seen Stacey Abrams in the African continent and all the times I've been covering news. So all of a sudden Stacey Abrams shows up and we know we see her with our, our antennas raised real quick and she's in Nigeria. I told y'all I knew something was up when I saw the Western media too concerned about Nigeria. Then this woman shows up. I said, Oh boy. Oh, what, what are they trying to pull? And y'all let me say this best way I can without getting in trouble here on Twitter spaces. There's a lot of people saying some funny business has been going on with this particular election. Let's continue. We've been speaking with have said they believe there will be high turnout today. You, of course, are well known in the United States for your activism, for being a political figure, an author, somebody who has done so much to try to expand voting rights from the conversations that you have had, especially with. Stacey Asian haven't done a thing for black folk. Not a thing. What, what is this man talking about? Full voters here in Nigeria. What is the takeaway? Well, I've had a chance to speak with uh, Yaga and with a number of youth voters across the across the state. And what they've said almost uniformly is they want to be heard. They believe progress is possible. They believe that more is possible. They understand that they are the most assailed by unemployment, that the challenges they face are real, but that so is the opportunity for change. What we've tried to have a conversation about, though, is the caution that not every election 
turns out the way you want, but that the responsibility is to show up and try to shape the future as much as you can. All right. Ladies and gentlemen who, who could be watching, that's very, very concerning to see Stacey, Stacey Abrams there. And it is not her business or any Western powers business with the elections, you know, how would go on in Nigeria. But let me say something to African countries in a, in a sense. In the United States of America, not one time have I ever seen an election international observers. The Western world does not have international observers in none of the elections. Why do you allow these Western observers into your elections for? Y'all can handle your own elections. Whatever how it comes out, that's how it comes out. It is what it is. It's not no one's business. On the continent, y'all got to have some, some big melons, okay? To say to these people, you don't have observers in your country, you don't have observers in your country, well, you're not coming to mind. Go on somewhere. We got our own elections. We handle it how we handle it, whatever it may be. We'll let the world know when we decide who the winner is, etc. But y'all have to pay attention in the African continent. These black politicians that show up there representing the Democrat Party, because that's who they represent, the left wing of white supremacy, if they haven't done nothing for black America, why do you think they would do something for you? Seriously, let's think about that. They haven't done a thing for black America. Everything that black America has received, they received on their own and not through a ballot box. You can study American history and see that to be evident. If they won't do nothing for black America, Stacey Abrams was asked point blank about what could she do for black Americans in Georgia? And she clearly said it's not enough black people to be doing things for because it is, we are, are, are less in population. So you have to focus on everybody else. She clearly said that, but she's going to show up to Nigeria and actually help you with your election and telling you, well, you may not get the, the election that you want. Stacy, you are a two time failed governor candidate. You're a failure. Okay. The only thing you could do is, is footwork for the Democrat party. I guess they say, well, Stacy, you have done great at, at just getting people to vote. Why don't you go to Nigeria and see if you can handle that? Like, Lord Jesus. Nigerians, be concerned. Be concerned. That Twitter space I heard earlier, boy, I, whew, boy, they were going in about some of that stuff. But anyway, he said, a brother said, all she can do is teach people how to fail. Exactly. But I just want to just cover that real quick before we get into the next part, which I really wanted to talk about here today. So, um, them folks, you know, they get into a point with black America where they tired of hiding. They're tired of hiding. They're tired of hiding how they feel about you, how they feel about me. You know, me, I am, I think what's one of them called me an accelerationist. There you go. And due to me being an accelerationist, that's what they say I am. I, I like them to expose themselves. I like them to say how they really feel because I don't like my people deceived on anything. Deception is one way they kept you in bondage for a long time. Is you deceiving yourself that this is not the way they feel about us as black people. And before I continue on that, Ghana trip. Let me make sure I do that before I forget because I want to get in, in, in a roll and I don't want to forget and not talk about that. There's um, 15 spots left on the Ghana trip. Um, if you'd like to go on the Ghana trip, there's a link in the pinned comment. Also, we are um, on the pinned chat. We also do it in the, in the pinned comment later uh, once the stream is over. Um, make sure you jump, put your deposit down. Um, take advantage of tax season. Some of you getting your income tax return um, and, and take that trip to Ghana is, is a, you know, of course you're going to see things, go to markets, all that. But it's also a real estate tour. I always tell people you can't really make things a reality to actually see something that maybe you could even invest in. It could be for you or whatever, right? Some people, you know, buy these things, make them Airbnbs, have extra income or whatever the case you may be with certain things in real estate. Expand yourself out of the Western world 
at least have somewhere you could say, okay, at least I got this piece of property. If I have to go somewhere one day, whatever reason, at least I got this. Instead of wasting our money on name brands, wasting our money in restaurants in America, um, we waste our uh, money on so many different things, right? Let's go there. At least say you went to the African continent at least once in your lifetime. Because some people never go, and I think it's sad. I think you should go at least once. So there was 15 spots left last time I heard. Get put your deposit down. Uh, go down on that website. Scroll to the bottom. Leave your information, and then you'll contact them and go from there. It'll be in October one through eight. Now, getting back to what we was talking about here, they are tired of y'all. They tired. They've been tired of y'all. And we're going to go through these videos a little bit. There's two videos, one of Ben Stein. Now, you know boring Ben Stein. He's the most boring guy in America, right? It's a video of him and then the video of a cartoonist by the name of Scott Adams. He created the uh, cartoon called Dilbert that'd be in a lot of the newspapers, etc. So let's go ahead on and get started with the first video. Um, let's key this up. Uh, that's Ben Stein there. All right. So he's holding a bottle of Aunt Jemima. Um, and they'll, those aren't even in circulation anymore because they've changed the name to Pearl Milling Company. Now, if you're using that mess, that is the mo most horrible syrup to use. If you want liquid diabetes, go ahead and use that, okay? Full of high fructose corn syrup, which is known to cause diabetes. You know, when you constantly ingest that, uh, high fructose corn syrup has been known uh, to cause obesity. When they introduced that back in the late, in the mid 70s, the obesity rate increased by 300%. Prior to that, it was using real cane sugar and everything. So anything with high fructose corn syrup, it says corn syrup, uh, anything like uh, fructose, anything like that on a package, please do not put that in your body. Please, especially if, you, if your family is prone to diabetes. Well, let's go ahead and start with him. If we can play this, this video. Okay, give me a second. I don't know why we're having problems with the video right now. I may, I may have to cue it back up. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right, we may, have to, we may have to cue this thing back up. Give me a second. I'll remove it here. Add the video back. Well, let's see where's the video at. Not there. Okay, for some reason we're not even seeing the video. That's weird. The video's not even playing. Hmm. Let me move Stacey Abrams' video right here. We already checked her out. ...to do something which I sometimes do, which is to make breakfast for dinner. Aunt Jemima yummy pancake syrup. Now, this used to show a large African-American woman chef, but because of the inherent racism of Americans' corporate culture, they decided to make it a white person or maybe no person. No, it was not because of, of, of corporate culture. It was just white supremacy. And they didn't make it into anybody else. They just put Aunt Jemima on there. And I remember when they made the change, because when I was growing up, it was the slave picture of, of Aunt Jemima when, when I was growing up, okay? It, it was that picture. Well, let's continue. I to do something which I sometimes do, which kind of have Americans' corporate culture. They decided to make it a white person or maybe no person at all. But I prefer it when it's a black person showing their incredible skill at making pancakes. Why, why did you prefer? And let me, let me let me get let me get back on the screen. Why why did he prefer that when it was a, a black woman? And remember, she had she looked it like a mammy. Because I I remember growing up when when I remember when they changed it to Aunt Jemima to have the little curly hair and all that. I remember when all that happened. So he was born way before me. So basically what you're saying is you like seeing a black woman look like a mammy on your pancake syrup. That just make you feel so great. And then he's part of the community that, that say that they deal with, they, they deal with issues and problems with the white supremacists 
but don't have no problem participating in it either. That's why I don't get involved with people's religion. I only focus it on white supremacy, period. There's a hierarchy in white supremacy, sure, but I never play that religion game because religion don't matter in a system of white supremacy. It really don't matter. But this guy say he, he's, he's, he was just, and, and, and this is the thing. You miss seeing a, 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 a mammy on a pancake syrup. How did that affect what you were eating? Because when they changed their oven to look more like more modern looking at that time period, how did it change the syrup? How did it change anything? The fact is, y'all have a sick obsession with black folk in a subservient position. I can't get into your mind. I'm not trying to understand your mind because I don't want to see no group of people in a subservient position to me. I don't want to see no group of people put on a bottle in a horrible position and named so I can sit up there and say, Ooh, look at that. Ooh, boy, there was some good pancakes when, when, when you had the old slave on there, but now they changed the Pearl Milling Company. Oh, this stuff is horrible. Same recipe, same everything, but you want to see a mammy on there. And then you wonder why black folks say the things that they say and why black folks don't even want to fool with y'all, Mr. Stein. Because now y'all having these conversations. Well, why black people, you know, they're not joining with us. Um, because younger black people actually see what y'all own. But let's go back. So God bless you all. Have a good evening. So now this guy here, he's one that took the cake. And um, let's really deal with this one. Because this, this, this video here is... is, is um, Something that a lot of black people need to see. See, this is the things that's being said behind closed doors. See, even with, with, when Ben Stein, when he just said, he wasn't supposed to say that publicly. He was supposed to keep that behind, behind the scenes. But let's go here. If you know, nearly half of all blacks uh, are not okay with white people, according to this poll, not according to me, according to this poll, uh, that's a hate group. <laughs> Isn't it funny how these people like to project on you and project on me? Black folks haven't done nothing to no group of people like his people have. And they're always trying to project. You remember I've done the, the video, ladies and gentlemen, about how they used to roam in mobs to go and violate black women? And then at the same time, when they're constantly doing this, they would label black men as the violators. And black men weren't doing crap. So anytime they try to say something about you and me, remember, they're talking about themselves because they love to project, okay? But let's continue. And then you say, we are a hate group. Wow. That's, it's, it's so funny. That's why I told y'all, if they speak it a lot of times, they lie. That's a hate group. And I don't want to have anything to do with them. And I would say, you know, based on the current way things are going, the best advice I would give to white people is to get the hell away from black people. Okay. That's the advice he gives to his people. Get get the hell away from black people. All right, got gotcha. Get the fuck away. Get, where, wherever you have to go, just get away. Well, you know, let, let me get back on the screen. I want to assist uh, 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 this white supremacist here. I want to assist him. You know, I did a little research. And, you know, people know I, I definitely support travel, passport, bro, and anything else that has to do with travel. And I think what he should do is get his passport. If you don't have it already, get your passport, sir. Get your passport. And I did some research. And I found out that Poland is a country that's about 96, almost 97% Caucasian. What you could do is leave the United States and go back to Europe, Poland, to be one of the countries. Go, just go to Poland. And you will not see black folks like that. And I know there's some Africans in Poland. I understand that. But they're so far and few in between. 96, almost 97% of the population in Poland is European. Another country you can go to, Malta. Malta is another country. Close to, I think, 95% European. 
There are many European nations that he can go to that he will not run into black folk. And the black folks that is in Poland, they're more so in the city because of school. They're not in these rural areas or anything like that. So he could r- never run into black folk. So why don't you take your happy self to Malta, Poland? You can go to Ukraine. Better place, better place for you, actually. Why don't you go to those places? I mean, look, for real, go back to Europe. If you don't like black folk, go back to Europe. Black folk will still be in the African continent right now. If your ancestors wasn't so freaking lazy and pick their own cotton. Okay. If your ancestors were to pick their own cotton and built everything on their own, right? We wouldn't be having this conversation. So if anybody needs to go anywhere, you need to carry, get your happy self and go to Europe. It's just that simple. And, and, and when these people say that to you, black people, you start telling them, well, you know what? Get your passport and go, go to Europe. I'm not chasing you over there. I'm not even trying to follow you over there. Trust me. If you go, because some of them say, well, we go back to Europe. You'll follow us. I promise you, I won't follow you. I promise you, I won't follow you. Ain't nothing over there I lost. Not a thing. But let's get back on the screen here. Because there's no fixing this. This can't be fixed. All right, this can't be fixed. You just have to escape. So that's what I did. I went to a neighborhood where, you know, I have a very low black population. Because unfortunately, there, you know, there's a high correlation between the density. And this is according to Don Lemon, by the way. Um, so here I'm just quoting Don Lemon. You're going to quote Don Lemon. Why do you need Don Lemon's commentary to do anything that you that for yourself? Like you can't even, you can't even stand on your own points that you got to bring up a black man. You you see, even, even in your decision-making, you still can't do it on your own. You still need a black person to say something, to help you or validate something you got going on. My God. When, when he notes that the, when he lived in a uh, mostly black neighborhood, there were a bunch of problems that he didn't see in white neighborhoods. So even Don Lemon sees a big difference in your own quality of living. I don't know if Don Lemon said that or not. You didn't bring you didn't bring the video of Don Lemon saying it. You didn't bring a tweet of Don Lemon saying that. I, I don't know. To me, it could be all cap right now. What you saying? You just looking for a black person? Could you notice that? They'll sit up here and try to use a black person to validate their white supremacy. Listen, you do not need black people to validate how you feel about black people. You don't need it. Just stand on your own two feet. Stop quoting a poll. Stop quoting Don Lemon or any other black person. Just stand on your own two feet. But that's something you've never really done since you've been here. You didn't build America on your own. You had to depend on everybody. You had to steal from people. You had to do so many different things, you know, outside of yourself. And even to this day, you still don't run America on your own because now you, you, you sit up here. And the reason why immigrants flood this country where they flooded is because you still can't run the country on your own. If, if, if every immigrant in this country leave, if they go back to their homeland. If black people leave, this country will fall tomorrow because you're not about to go out there and, and, and do no agriculture. You're not about to go out there and do man, no manual labor. You're not about to do a whole, you ain't about to do it. I know you. I know exactly who you are. I worked around you for many years. I know how it is when you start doing manual labor. You fall apart. You can't stand it. You, you, need, you need other groups of men to do the work for you. Based on where you live and who's there. So I, I think it makes no sense whatsoever as a uh, white citizen of America to try to help black citizens anymore. Okay. Now I want to stop right there and get back on the screen. I haven't met one black person in my life and I've been living a little while. I haven't met one black person in my life and say, I need people like this one on the screen to help me. I, I can't make it unless they help me. I have never said that. I say, I need the help of the Lord. I said that the help of my family, the help of my community. Sure. But I've never looked at or leaned on the pin on anybody. Like I, I don't know no black people who's saying that. Not a one. 
even from, from a black person that's struggling, homeless on the street, all the way up to the ones that got money, I haven't met one to say, man, life will sure be better if, if them folks help us. They never helped us. So, so why all of a sudden, like, like we, who told you to help black people? I just want to know, because I haven't met one of them. That, and, and, and listen, bring me a video, bring me a tweet, bring me something. That, that, uh, that some black people came up to you specifically and say, I really need your help, sir. Oh, my life would be better if you helped me, sir. Black people are not asking you for anything. You just said you went to some little white enclave somewhere. Okay, don't help black people. I promise you, we'll be fine. Matter of fact, stay over there. Don't leave. Don't utter our name. Don't be around us. I promise you, we'll survive. We were surviving way before you showed up on the planet Earth, and we'll be surviving way after you're gone. That, that's why, see, see, let me tell y'all something else. That climate change stuff they talk about. Oh, the, the world, Earth is getting hotter. It sure is. You're right. That you're right about. The weather patterns are crazy right now. It's, it's climate change. Well, it, it's called Father God getting the, 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 the climate in order. You understand? And see, the Lord can make it 200 degrees Fahrenheit outside. As long as I, we have water in our bodies and we have a constant flow of it, of course, you can't sweat yourself, we'll be all right. See, uh, uh, us black folk, we're children of the sun. We don't fear the sun. We don't fear that. We good. Let the sun get hotter. It's fine. We'll be okay. That's why when I be hearing them talking about, we need to talk more about climate change in the African continent. We got to help them. They don't need your help. They don't need you because they're children of the sun. Let's continue. It doesn't make sense. It's no longer a rational impulse. And so I'm, I'm going to, he said it's no longer a rational impulse. No, no, no. You, you talking about you want you to helping black folk, but black folk don't need you. We never needed you. We were fine in the African continent. We fine now. We don't need you, sir. We don't need you. We don't need you. And we don't need you. I'm going to repeat that. We as a community don't need him. Uh, I'm going to back off from being helpful to black America because it doesn't like it pays off. Oh, like I've been doing it all play. my life. Oh, hold on, hold on, and I've been, hold on, hold on. the hold only on. outcome is I, be, I get called. Hold, hold on, hold on. I am so happy that, that, that he said that he is not going to help out black America. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That's the only outcome. <laughs> it makes no sense to help black Americans if you're white. Uh, the, the, it's over. Don't don't even think it's worth. Trying. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So um, as you heard, now let me tell you what happened after that. His Dilbert cartoon has been removed out of all newspapers and magazines and publications. So him saying that on a video, he he hurt his own self. Now he said really the quiet part out loud. These are conversations that happens when we're not around or around other quote unquote people of colors when we're not around too. When they feel that they are just as white supremacists as they are and they're making these comments. The only reason they're responding to him, let me tell you something, them folks can't stand our goods, but they love our money. And any of them to get out of line and break code because see the code is this we do feel listen they feel that way about us just like he feels okay what he's saying is not so far-fetched as wrong but he said it out loud he put his face to it he didn't go on the internet and troll behind a, a, a nameless and faceless account ben stein said this and he put his face out there he put his name out there right so now because we want their money. We got to publicly distance ourselves from you. We have to call you a racist. We have to say you're bigoted. 
we have to say it, even though we said the exact same thing that y- y'all both said, but you don't say that in public. That is breaking code, white supremacist code. You, you may stir up the, the black folk and they may want to boycott us or they may not want to spend money with us. And so we immediately got to respond before they come out and respond. So that's why they, they're so quick. Now, black folks, in that, black folks don't read no Dilbert. Now, I know I've seen that before years ago. I said, this stuff is boring. And I, I don't, I mean, it, it's their humor, and their humor is their humor, and they can keep that. But it wasn't nothing interesting to me. It's not like it was the freaking boondocks or something, right? But, but this is how a lot of them feel about us as black Americans. And that, ladies and gentlemen, it's a good thing. It should let you know that you need to be doing for yourself. You need to be creating your own jobs because let me tell you something else. Some of these people on jobs feel just like him about you. That you go work for every day. And people like him don't want you to get a higher salary. People like him will hire another person like himself with no education and make them your supervisor in six months that you've been there 10 years. You get a master's degree. You don't even make the money that one of them made with a high school diploma. A lot of people feel like him in his community. And this isn't, that guy isn't your trailer park, white supremacist. This guy is one that got some money. So when you think that the white supremacist is only that trailer park poor type, no, it goes all the way up even to the highest halls of government. It's in the judicial branch. It's everywhere. Like if you look at uh, the virus, right? When that was around, uh, Andre, thank you for joining us. Uh, appreciate that. And a creative creation muse say 520 years of struggle is supposed to get fixed in 20, 30 years. Most of them folks do not want to own up to their history of domestic violence in America. The jail, prison, juvenile institutions are not correcting anything. Um, well, that system was never meant to jail them. That was only meant to jail us. Hence to why we are more in jail than they are, even though they are more in population and commit more crime than black people because it's more of them, but yet it's more black people in jail. The majority of our community is the is criminals. But this is the thing. See, for me, I'm talking about me personally. Of course, I work with anybody that want to work with me, no matter where they at in the world, whether they're here or abroad. But I love being and in, in, in connecting with black folk. I'm not begging to be around him. I'm not trying to beg or be around anything that he got going on. I'm good. I am completely good. But one thing I want to tell a lot of you as black folks, no matter where you come from, is that this is more, you know, proof for you that we should unify as a people. We should work together, no matter where we come from. If someone is a bootlicking, shoe shining raccoon, we call them out, no matter where they come from. We disassociate ourselves with them, period, no matter where they come from. And I'm talking about all the diaspora. And the diaspora includes black America too, all the diaspora. If you, if you raccooning, we got to get rid of you. If you on, you know, the same code we on, you trying to do something, we trying to work together, then that's what we going to do. That's what I'm on. Any black person that want to work with me, no matter where you from and you about, you know, the business with that, I'm, I'm definitely want to work with you, of course, within reason. It has to be the right time, the right place, et cetera. Because these people here are, are, are tired of you. They, they tired of you. They, they, they tired of educating you. Matter of fact, they don't even want to, listen, their history is so bad that they don't even want it taught to nobody. That's how bad their history is. I mean, have you thought about that for a minute? how bad their history is. I mean, think about it. If I was a white supremacist, I wouldn't want nobody to really teach my true history either. I wouldn't want nobody to teach that. That's horrible. Everybody throughout the world know exactly what I, what my, where I come from. 
the lineage I come from, like I would have no more authority in the world coming from that kind of lineage. And this is why they don't want that their history being taught in, in, in public school. But it's going to be taught. Not, we, it's going to be taught all over the world, not just here, but all over the world. The more you say not to teach your history, you know how people are. You're going to get the opposite. Now more people are going to want to dig deep dive into your history because you know it's so bad that you don't want it taught. You want laws put on the books because your history is so bad. It's so bad that you don't want nobody to know about it. I haven't ever met one other group of people in the world that don't want their history taught. Not one. That should let you know that they know what they've done to black folk. See that same attitude this guy got, or both of them have, it's the same group of people that used to take black people's skin and make uh, leather goods out of it. That same mindset right there you heard in that video, it's the same ones that used to use black people's body parts to make grease for their wheels and everything else. Them same people, the same mindset right there in their history, they used to sit up there and uh, actually cannibalize black folk. Read the book, The Delectable Negro. Don't take my word for it. Read it. All, the reason why black folks don't trust their systems with doctors and all of that, read a medical apartheid and all the crap they've done to black people. Read it. The, the, the research and information is already out there for you to get educated on people throughout the world. If you really know who want to know who they are, the, the information is readily available. You don't need their, their so-called, and I say indoctrination system, it's not education. You don't need their indoctrination system to learn anything. Go research it yourself. Because they can't stop you from learning on your own. They can only stop you if you're going to go underneath their teaching. Because they, they, once again, their history is so bad, they don't want it taught. You're talking about Florida, for instance. But Ron DeSantis, you know, some, he don't want certain parts of their history taught. Even though I was supportive of certain things about the AP course, he still don't really want all their history taught. He don't want that they used to take black babies and use them as alligator bait in Florida. Could you imagine, could you imagine that being taught every day in school? That little infant babies was being taken, rope was tied to their to they ankles and thrown in to catch alligator. They don't want that taught. That, that's what they done. Not black people, not Asians, not Hispanics. Not Native Americans, not all these different people, or another thing they don't want taught. They don't really want taught that Native Americans had owned slaves too. The Cherokees owned slaves. The Choctaw owned slaves. Notice they don't teach all that. You would think that they would be the first ones talking about, hey, it wasn't just us. It was them Choctaws. They had slaves. Them Cherokees had slaves. So, so don't just tell us about reparations. Tell them. They don't want you to know certain aspects of history. And everything I'm saying, you can go research on your own. Who just learned that, that his ancestors was enslaved to some Native Americans? Don Cheeto, he learned that. He wasn't even enslaved to white people. He was enslaved to red Native Americans, his, his ancestors. You say, you say, Andre, you said the Creek, the Chickasaw, and the Shawnee, too? Yeah, that's why. I, and, and, and one thing I, I watched on that program, I thought it was interesting. For years, a lot of black folks like, I got Native American in me. I'm Native American. I'm like, I used to always look at black folks and I hear them say that. But then when their DNA gets ran, there's no Native American. You do realize that every look on the planet comes from the continent of Africa. I hope you know that, right? Like, everyone is an offshoot of our DNA. Like, do you realize that the black woman is the only woman to have the Eve gene? I hope you know that, right? Even them folks. Them folks is an offshoot of a black folk. You don't believe me? You know, I mean, let's call it what it is. Their ancestors are the albinos. The albinos, if you study history, was always rejected. You, you take, think about it. You take albinos, take them to Northern Europe, getting the cold, DNA and different things change in that area, you get them. Be honest with you. The reason why they have so much of a mince, I say this before and I say it again, 
the reason why they have so much of the intense and immense um, hatred for us is because we rejected them. And they've been on the war path ever since we rejected them. They can't stand us, but they can't stay away from us at the same time. That's like the weird part. You know what I'm saying? Because he can say all day, well, he's going to move to this area where we're not at, but yet he'll still talk about us when we're not around. They'll still try to come around where we're at. You know what I'm saying? So, so you can't stand us, but you can't stay away from us. Because if you stay by yourself, there's no creativity there. There's no flavor there. There's no, nothing you can steal anymore because you're around your own. And if you study their own history, when they're around each other, they clash. They get into wars real quick with each other. They don't like each other. I remember a guy I used to work with, he told me, he said, you know what? He said, As I'm a white person, I'm telling you, we don't like each other like that. He said, I don't know why people think we like each other. He said, I would not want to live in America where there's, where there's only white people. He told me. He said, because we don't like each other, we fight about everything. He said, and, and I'm sorry, I just couldn't be around. No, I could not be around just white people every day. He said, I couldn't do it. And this was a white person telling me this. I've never had that kind of thought process about black people. and say, oh, I wouldn't want to be in a country full of black people. Oh, we don't get along. Like, I've never felt that way. But he's only quoting, really, if you study their history. That's how they got down. When I went to Turkey... And I saw when they had all the uh, uh, indentured service slash slaves, they were, when white people say, we were slaves too, yeah, they were. They actually were. In their areas, yeah. They were. But they wasn't treated like we were treated. That's the difference. And they wasn't, they wasn't uh, put into slavery their whole lives either. That was the total difference. But yeah, they, oh yeah, they, they treated each other bad. If you were the poor a poor white, yeah. Even to this day, poor whites are really treated bad. But the only difference is that poor whites are so deceived that they really think helping the rich whites is going to benefit them in some way, shape, form, or fashion. And how they convince them and say, look, you're so much better than them black people. Hey, at least you're not one of them. You white like me. Even though they're taking everything from them, leaving them in the poor house, treating them bad, giving them the same bad food, the same bad medication, the same bad everything, but at least you ain't like them black folk. We listen, we're not deceived, but they are. And this crazy part is, even when it comes to politics, they will vote in policies that actually hurt them. They will do it just because they're not looking like me and you. I know it's crazy. See, as I get older, Gail Chi, thank you for joining us uh, on the uh, broadcast, and thank you for becoming a member. Um, as I get older, I, I don't really have patience for it. I don't even have a fight in me for certain things anymore because I realized one thing he said that was true. There's no fixing it. He's right. He was a hundred percent right when he said there's no fixing it. It's none. And since something is not to be fixed, then maybe we need to be doing something else. That's why I don't want to have no conversations at this point about what can we do to fix the, uh, uh, the discrimination? What can we do to change this? How can we cut? I don't want to talk about that because I have seen over the years that it's a waste of time. Are there some individuals of any community that has been great? That has been a true ally has been a friend or even like family to people. Sure. And I told y'all my policy individuals. Yes. Groups. No, that's been my policy. And that will continue to be my policy based off of what I've seen in life. Cause groups do not side with us like that, but some individuals can. And even when you see these individuals show up, ask questions. What got you so interested in, you know, these kind of spaces? Who's your family? Where they come from? Is these individuals trying to bring something to the table that can help? Or, or is this individual trying to lead you to go commit crime? 
telling you, hey, you know, I got some guns over here you want to buy. If anybody tell you about committing a crime or I got some guns, man, we need to go, we need to go do something to, to, to these police, anything like that, automatically say, okay, you, you a freaking agent? Get the hell on. Don't ever let nobody come around you talking about doing some crime or getting a gun or nothing. I can get you whatever gun you want. Name it. It's so, if y'all study history, that's how so many people got caught up. Anybody approaching you telling you about a gun or committing any kind of crime, they are not an ally and they are an op. And get them away from you. I'm telling you, even certain black folk. Yeah, man, come on, man. We need to all mo- Okay, and all them black folks that talk like that in this system, where they at? Where they at, though? This is why certain things I don't report on, certain things I don't even entertain on this platform for a lot of reasons based off of what something my brother told me years ago to put me on game about my platform and what we do and what influence it can have. I don't want to hear talk any of that. I'm only reporting the news. We are trying to connect with, with, with the diaspora. We are trying to bring people to the continent, bring people to the Caribbean, bring people to connect with each other. Let's grow together. That's, that's, that's harmonize, right? We do that. We do not get involved with any of that because one thing I have learned over the years out of all of that from Ferguson all the way to now, nothing has changed. Not a thing. A bunch of people have been went to jail and a bunch of people are dead. And, and this system still keep rolling on. Cause we have black sellouts who more focus on selling us out than actually trying to fix our community. And just be honest with you, I'm more at peace when I'm working with the community on different things. Especially when I love to work with the diaspora on different things. And when I mean a diaspora, once again, I'm talking about black Americans. I'm talking about uh, other black people in the world, no matter if they're from Canada, the Caribbean, wherever, don't matter, African continent, Latin America, wherever. I'm more at peace and I'm working with the, within the community. I get so much joy out of that. When I went to that event in New York City and I met people from the African continent, I met people from the Caribbean, it was just great. It was so great. Just to everybody talking on, on the same call, what we can do as a community to advance black people, to connect. I love that. I love that. I'm not in no, I'm not getting involved with nobody's diaspora wars. I don't want nothing to do with it. I will check you if you're wrong now. Don't get me wrong. I'ma check you. If you're doing some wrong behavior, I don't care where you come from as a black person. Oh, I'ma say something. If you're disrespectful, I'ma say something. You better believe that. But as a global family, families have disagreements. But we need to work with each other as much as possible because that guy right there and, and his ilk ain't it. Uh, Wall Street Tech, thank you very much. They carry on, sir. Carry on. I, I appreciate that. Um, what we, what we get right now? What time it is? Okay, we're almost an hour in. But 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 this this is what I, I, I will say. Uh, to that also about even in diaspora and, and, and different things I've been invited to. Sometime in life, you need to go where God sends you. There are things in life that you may want to do that may not be for you to do. And at one point in time, I used to deal with something years ago about like, why, why isn't I'm being a part of certain things or being invited to certain events or, or whatever. And then it dawned on me one day because that is not your path. That is not your people who you are supposed to be a part of that. There's a group of people and there's a path in line for you. And once I actually got to see that path and actually got to know what that path is and where the, where that's at, I said, Oh, this is it. This is what I was supposed to do. There, there's, there's also a scripture in the Bible that teaches well that a prophet is without honor in his own hometown. And for me, what I've discovered over the years 
is that America is my hometown. Now, they said that Jesus couldn't do many miracles in Nazareth. They didn't say he couldn't do any. He couldn't do many because people knew him, et cetera, right? We just talking. The great black man that he was, Jesus. So how I feel about America sometimes is I can't do, I can do something, but I can't do a whole lot. But when I go out of America, I do a whole lot more. It's more opportunity, at least for me. Now, for you, it may be something different. Your path may be different. Another thing I wanted to give you some advice on. If something, if something is, is, is a no, take that as a no, because something else may be greater. Like certain things you may want to do, and it's just like so difficult, you just can't do it no matter what. Accept that at that point, that may not be for me. And maybe it's something else that I should be doing. Maybe it's something else. Always be open as a brother or a sister to, to, to different opportunities and getting out of your comfort zone. Because sometimes some of us stay in our neighborhoods, stay in our cities. We don't go nowhere. And that's not, may not be for you to stay there. Your view may be to go to another state. It may be something great. Go to another country. Be open to do something. And don't hang around any person that's going to tell you what you can't do or negative people in your life. Don't do that either. Because we, we got enough negativity from them folks and other things like that. Right. But always be just open a little bit. Live your life. Complete the mission that the Lord put you on. See, I'm trying to finish my mission. Right. And when I complete my mission, and I go on, you know, later on with God, then when they look back at my legacy, they can say, okay, Phil did this, this, and the third. He put this many people on. He helped this many people expand some things. He did this, you know, things that you may not know I'm doing or come out later or whatever. Fine. But what kind of legacy are you going to leave on the earth when, when it's your time? You don't want a legacy when nobody remembers you because you just sat in your neighborhood all your life. You sat in your state all your life, didn't do nothing. All you did was go punch a clock for a guy like that in the video who can stand your behind no way. I seen a, a thing the other day from, from a McDonald's. Horrible, oh my God, this is horrible. I don't see how any black person worked for these people beyond with you. They had a thing that like, if you stayed at, Walt, at this McDonald's for 10 years, 20 years, and 30 years, they're going to give you a bonus. Well, they said because of the hard work of, of certain people, they had three people that qualified for like, I think a, a 30 year, I think one for a, a 20 year, I think one for a 10 year. Well, if you were there for 10 years, you got a hundred dollar bonus, a hundred dollars. That is your bonus for working at a at McDonald's for 10 years. The other person got $200. And a 30 year people, 30 year people got only $300 folks. That is a sin and a shame, a sin and a shame. And one thing I will tell black people, you would never, never, never make the money that you deserve working for them folks. They will never pay you enough. They will never value you enough. It will never happen. Get your skills up. When you work for them folks, learn everything you can learn, create your own. And that's the only way you're going to see some money. And it's the only way you can even help other black people. Let me tell you something. Everything I have done, I have, I, through our platform, because it's things that I want to do outside of working for them folks, we can pay thousands of dollars that we have to pay each month to other black people in payroll. I would never could pay afford to pay a dime work to nobody working for them folks when I was in the petrochemical industry. Cause I barely could afford what I had in that. The greatest thing we can do as black people is do what the honorable Elijah Muhammad told us to do is to do for self, build for self, and then create things to, to create, give jobs to other black people. Cause see, look, I'm not for big, like the one thing I'm not for, I'm not going to beg the fellow in that video for crap. I don't need him for crap. All I need is my God and then my fam my family, that my personal family and my community. That's the only thing I need. 
I don't need nothing else. And that's how I want a lot of you to be. Some of y'all beg them people too much. Some of y'all in politics beg them people too much. One thing I'm going to tell you, them people not going to do nothing for you unless you make them. They're not going to do a thing for you. The Democrat party is not going to do nothing for you. The Republican party is not going to do nothing for you unless you make them. And right now, a lot of you just going to a ballot box voting for them people. That's not, how's that been working out for black folk? Notice during the civil rights movement, when we was actually putting foot to pavement, actually boycotting these folks, building our own businesses, having our own businesses. Notice how we was getting more headway that way. And the moment the 1970s came and on, y'all been sitting up there and just like, let me go vote. That's going to change something in the community. What has it changed? We have less black businesses today. We don't have the property we used to have. We don't have the land we used to have. We've lost a whole lot when black folks start depending on them people. And that's your problem. You depend on them people way too much. You really depending on the Democrat party to fix our problems. Even if you're a Republican, you really believe the Republican party going to fix our problems. Hell, they can't even fix white folks problems. If you, if you look at it, look, look, look at their community. They can't fix their own problems. What's that street in Philadelphia that they, 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 they full of uh, 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 fentanyl and all that? And it's, it's them. They can't fix their own problems. So since they can't fix their own problems, why, why is you as black folk are telling them or expecting them to fix our problems? Or Africans, or Caribbeans, why are you looking at them to fix our problems? We fix our own problems. I hate to see our people sitting up there begging them people. And another thing, section eight, more and more landlords are rejecting section eight. And I say, that's good. Landlords keep rejecting section eight. You know why? Because one thing I know about is black folk. We do better under pressure. Well, Phil, there's some people that are going to be put in the street. Some of them people have been on section eight for 10 and 20 years. It's time for them to be on their own two feet. That's not the history of our people. Our people never lived on no program. For all the hundred, y'all talk about the hundreds of years we've been here, we didn't have no Section 8. We had no welfare. We had no food stamps. What we had is our freaking hands. What we had is our feet. We had our mind. We had our mouth, our eyes, our ears. We got it out of the mud on our own. We need no program. We don't need a program now. You didn't have no child support. You didn't have nothing. We did what we had to do as a community. And the moment you sat up here and, and threw all your dependence on them people is why we in the condition that we in today. You depended on their program, depended on their system, depended on this and depended on that. And this is why that man got the gall to tell you, we don't need to be helping black people no more. That's why he's saying it. Cause y'all, cause the programs come through his community. We didn't create section eight. And all, and all those programs was created to help out them, not us. One thing I don't like is somebody to beg anybody for anything. I prostrate myself before the feet of God and ask him and beg him for his help. I'm not asking them people. Y'all too dependent on them people, too dependent. So, so, so some of you, why is he making those kind of videos where he's celebrating if, if food stamps get cut? Yeah, I'm for it. Cut it. They can cut it all because my people was fine before it came along. That actually crippled black people. And you gonna have some genius. Well, you know, it crippled everybody. I don't talk about what everybody do because that's not my place. I'm gonna stay in my lane. My lane is talking about black folk and what we do all globally. So I'm gonna stay right there. I've told people many times before, I'm gonna stay there, talking about black people, whether you like what I'm saying, or even talk about uncomfortable conversations too. Because when I talk about relationships and all of that and the craziness of that, some people don't like when I go there and say certain things. Well, I'm staying within my lane and talking about these things. 
And just because you're speaking about black people's issues globally, doesn't mean you can't address things that people don't like. See, I'm not that guy. Cause see, they used to, this mindset is, well, if you're speaking about black people, you shouldn't be saying that because it, no, 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 no. I'm going to call you out right, wrong, and different. And if certain things need to happen to correct an issue, I'm going to say that too, whether you like it or not. There, there's a video I just seen the other day and I, I, it, just, it just bothered me and great black shark posted it and shout out to him of this young single mother living in a freaking van. What a whole child. But you want to get mad when I go in about making these children and being married for you making these chip. So if you don't like that kind of conversation out of me, just stay away from that kind of video. Well, well, Daniel Burke says, uh, said the white supremacy would continue along with the Iraq competition. Yes, but, and that's fine. And let them be the slaves that they are. What I'm saying is, is to the majority who are not really thinking that way is to let's do for ourselves and also connect somewhere else because what y'all don't know and stop letting people deceive you because at this stage in the game from what I've seen, that's deception. Them folks is trying to get a foothold in that African continent. More and more of them folks every day is trying to move there, get property there, whether they from, from Asian countries, Arab countries, or white countries, they're all trying to get a foothold in there because they see, they see where it's at. Trust me, that's where it's at anyway. You don't have no resources in the Western world. What do you got? You got crap. What diamond mine do they got in America? What uranium they got in America? Well, what do they got in Europe, in Canada? Well, what, what do they have? They have nothing. What oil do they really have like that? Yeah, they got oil here in Texas and different places, but not in the, in the amount that the African continent has. We better get in there before it gets so expensive. Well, it's going to be like America. That's what I'm telling black folk. We, we built this. We did that. We control nothing. That's my thing. I know we built it. I know, but we control nothing. We control nothing. We own nothing. I can't walk around with this great pride about what we built in my heart when we own nothing. What kind of pride is that? Now, if you prideful in our ancestors building it and they controlling it and running it into the ground, literally, because they are running into the ground, then do you. But for me, my ancestors have traveled the globe and built in multiple places. Don't pigeonhole yourself to one place. I keep telling y'all that. Instead of wasting your money with these name brand clothes and these cars and all the other things like that black folks waste their money on in restaurants, start traveling and start building something for yourself. If you got a business in America, black person, Take a division of your business and put it in the Caribbean, put it in the African continent. Put it in Latin America if you can find a good place there too, where there's black people at, of course. I'm talking about the community. If you can run a business in America, you can run a business overseas. You got a great restaurant, always great. Yeah, you make soul food. They need some soul food restaurants in the Caribbean and in the African continent. For the Chinese, copy your soul food recipes and put one up. You go over there like, what Mr. Lee talking about a soul food restaurant? Mr. Lee, like, are you serious? I don't want that to happen. But Mr. Lee would do, you know, Mr. Lee, he, he, him and his people, they the copy, copy and paste society out of China. That's what they do. They copy your stuff and they paste it. And they'll make more money than you doing it. So what I'm telling y'all is you got a good restaurant, uh, you got a good, uh, 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 any kind of business that's great. Some of you who are, who are doing waste management, some of you brothers, truck drivers, all kinds of, you could take them skills and replicate that in the African continent. You already got the skills. You will win in the area of labor. You can still pay them good for their, for their, in their country, but you're still going to win in labor. You're not going to have to pay tax taxes, state tax, unemployment tax, 
federal tax for those particular employees. Trust me, when you have an employee in the United States, you gotta pay all those taxes. The business and the employee, but the business gotta pay for every single person that they employ. You don't have to worry about that over there. I said there's a turkey leg hut. The turkey leg hut getting sued every other day. There's no reason for the turkey leg hut to not go have a turkey leg hut in, in Ghana, a turkey leg hut in Nigeria, a turkey leg hut in, in Kenya, South Africa, uh, Botswana, R Rwanda. There's no reason why the turkey leg hut cannot be in all those multiple countries. I promise you, if they put the turkey leg hut over there, if they go put a freaking turkey leg hut in, in, in freaking Kingston, Jamaica, they're not gonna worry about getting sued every five minutes. I, I'm just saying, the brother of the day was talking about his payroll is $100,000 a month. Okay, so you're making money, brother. Take that money that you're making and go start some other turkey leg huts somewhere else where well, these people can't fool with you like that. That's the stuff I'm talking about. We sit here as black folk and sit up here like sitting ducks and let these people take us down and destroy our businesses instead of being smart and expanding our businesses to places where they can't put their they, they hands on. In America, as black people, we behind enemy lines. Always. No matter how much money you make, you're still behind enemy lines. Be smart. Expand your businesses, black man. Expand your businesses, black woman. Expand it. You're already doing it in America. Expand it. Yeah, that's right. You say motherland 2025, whatever you think you need to do. Expand it. And also, I'm putting a call out right now. In the Caribbean, I'm looking for journalists in the Caribbean. If you're a journalist that lives in the Caribbean, Jamaica, Barbados, Bahamas, etc., I'm looking for a journalist out there. If you're a journalist on television, no matter where you're at, I'm going to act like Suge Knight. If you don't want nobody to tell you what to do, Controlling what you say, come over here to African Diaspora News Channel. I need somebody out of the Caribbean. Trinidad, Tobago, no matter what country you are, you got the training, you know what to do. You always been, you the type of person that they can't work with you because you just too outspoken and you live there. Because you got to live there. You can't live here. Sorry, you can't live in America. But if you live there and you want to expose what's happening in your country or throughout the Caribbean, how them folks are trying to take advantage of, of your people while you're there. Well, no matter who they are, whether they come from China or whatever, and you want to fight for your people and want to have a platform where you can speak for your people, come over here. I need a Caribbean journalist. I need one. You can email me if you are that Caribbean journalist. Email me with your work, things you've done in the past, or maybe you've never done nothing in the past, even if it's just on YouTube and you're just a person that we can see you got it. Email me at jobs at africandiasporanews.org. We need somebody out of the Caribbean. My dream is to make this come together. We got black Americans here, great people. They do great things for us that you can see and some you don't see behind the scenes. We got some great people in the African continent. We're going to span there, but we need Caribbean. Latin America, you too. Afro-Latinos and Latinas, if you want to talk about the racism that's going on in your country, we need a journalist over there too. We got to hit all corners where black people at. We don't have no African, Afro-Latinos over here saying nothing about what's happening to black folks in Latin America. There's more black folks in Latin America than it is here in the, in the United States. If you're interested, same thing. Email jobs at africandiasporanews.org. Email me, you know, your work. If you've been on TV, et cetera. Or hell, you just done things on YouTube and you just got the juice and I can see it. We need that. Caribbean and Afro uh, uh, Ameri Latinos in Latin America. We, we got to have it. We got to have Because we missing those, those stories and we're not getting enough of it. And that bothers me. But once again, I'm going to say you must live in those countries. I don't need somebody to live here to talk. No, 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 no. That, that, that takes away from the experience. You must live in those countries, wherever you're from. You need to live there, not here.
But thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on the uh, stream. We greatly appreciate it. Um, let me see, Tina Diggs. Let me go ahead. Thank, thank you for joining us as well, becoming a, a member. And uh, Aaron Israel, uh, thank you for becoming a member. We greatly appreciate it. Um, I, I just had to kind of, you know, go there because some of us don't really feel like we can do certain things ourselves because we got black folks that would tell you. We need this from these people. We need that from them people. Listen, I support reparations, and we, de we deserve reparations. They owe us reparations. But in the meantime, while we talk about that, we got stuff to build. We're not going to sit up here and hold our breath waiting for these people while we should be building. Because this is the thing. You remember during the time of the virus when all the stimulus checks was going out? There are people that live overseas, black folks. They got stimulus checks deposited in their bank accounts. So what that means is we can, we can continue to build and they can deposit our reparations in our bank accounts. We don't have to sit up here and hold our life waiting for them because I'm not holding my, my life waiting for them. I'm not doing it and I don't expect you to do it. That's not what our ancestors have ever done anyway. They never held themselves and held their breath and just hoping for the benevolence of the, of, of the white supremacists. They've never done that. They have been builders and they have been innovators. And if you're not building or innovating, you are being shameful to our great ancestors. That's just that simple. Our ancestors aren't beggars. They aren't pleading. They aren't looking for no, our ancestors never looked for no program. They never did anything like that. They were builders and innovators. What we see today, the laziness we see in our, our community, unfortunately, the, the baby deletion in our community, that's not been our, 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 our community. What the hell? Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening. We'll see you on the next stream.